I'm a massive fan of Italian wine. I uh, I probably spent more time in Italy than anywhere else outside of Australia, and. Uh, mainly because we used to take student trips to 15. Um, I'd go myself a couple of times a year. And I guess the thing I love about Italy is the diversity. There's no other country in the world where you get that diversity from north to south. You know, you're up in Piedmont and the people are tall and they're pale. And then you move right down to the south and you get down to Sicily where people are short and they're dark. And, you know, and, and the food changes as dramatically, the wine changes as dramatically, um, the language changes. And it's just, you know, it, it's incredible to see it in motion. And um, you know, that's with, you know, Italy boasts well over a thousand varieties in the ground and, and that's phenomenal in its own right. Um, some of my favourites, I guess, I love Piedmont up in the north northwest. Um, you know, in particular, I'm a big fan of Barolo, but also Great Barbera and Dolcetto from up there. Um, Tuscany, I spend a lot of time in as well, and Sangiovese and Super Tuscans. Um, Brunello, I'm a big fan of. Uh, and then I think what's really exciting too is what's going on in the south. So areas like um, Campania, Puglia, Sardinia, Sicily, where there's some sort of grape varieties that have traditionally, I guess that's sort of almost been the breadbasket of Italy and that's sort of supplied a lot of the bulk, cheaper wine to Italy and now starting to get the kudos they deserve. There's been big improvements in the vineyards, um, technology in the wineries and, you know, fantastic consultancy from different parts of Italy as well as around the world. And that's all led to a huge kind of upsurge in quality. And, you know, to see those wines um, really starting to get the recognition they deserve is great. Yeah, the rise of international wines, um, particularly domestically in, in Australia, has been great. I mean, I think when I started in wine 15 years ago, there was quite a bit. Um, it sort of, it, it tended to be French or Italian and sort of dropped off the radar a bit. Um, you know, and, and we've, we sort of found that, I guess at the beginning of the, the sort of the 2000s, there was, a, there was a, a big resurgence in a lot of things, particularly from South Australia and sort of traditional styles that Australia had been producing. But I think over the last 10 years, we've come a long way as consumers, like in terms of our understanding of food. Um, we've conquered the kitchen. Um, and I think that that sort of confidence has really led us to wine and sort of we've sort of thought food wasn't as hard perhaps as we thought to get our heads around how much dif how much more difficult can wine be it's difficult but they get in there more more willing than ever to sort of try new things and step outside their comfort zone so whereas once upon a time people would have stuck with Cabernet, Shiraz, Chardonnay, Sauv Blanc people are willing to sort of explore now and I think you know as a result I think the rise to in, in great prices locally has meant that there's sort of been certain voids to fill and you get places like I was talking about a second ago, Sicily, Sardinia, Campania who are producing some really good value wines starting to come here, Portugal, lesser known parts of Spain um, and other parts of the Mediterranean that are really sort of again producing some great wines that are food friendly, good value for money. And our curiosity I think with food has led us to those wines and thanks to the fact that we've got like a got a, a really savvy bunch of importers now in Australia who are sort of ex-sommeliers, ex-restaurateurs, ex-retailers who've gone on to sort of, you know, start to import some some really clever and, 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 and smart wines. Um, it's great, you know, and it, I think we're only going to, it's only going to get more and more diverse as we go on. Look, I think the rise in alternative varieties in Australia is a fantastic thing. It's come about for a number of reasons. A, our, our rising curiosity in, in all things wine. Um, and our changing tastes. And I think a lot of the alternative varieties that are finding their way into the ground in Australia at the moment are probably perhaps lend themselves, you know, a little bit more to the, the styles of food that we're eating. The other, the other reason I believe that, that we're starting to see more and more of them is that a lot of growers are starting to look at varieties that are gonna survive in a, in a hotter, drier, you know, more water stressed environment going forward. Um, you know, and, and, and we are that, that country and a lot of them are looking towards sort of hotter, drier parts of the Mediterranean for these varieties. So we're seeing things like um, Primitivo, Negro Amaro, um, Nero Davila, um, Tariga Nacional, you know, those, those things that can survive in hot climates in Portugal, same in the south of Italy and Spain. And I think that's a, that's a fantastic thing. Um, do they compete on style? They're different, you know? I mean, it, it would be wrong to, to compare them. You get to see, I guess, a snapshot of varietal character which is great. I think the thing that we've got to get our heads around here is, you know, we've been making, we've been making Shiraz and Chardonnay and Cabernet a particular way. And those varieties, you know, really react differently to um, how they're treated in the winery and in the grounds. And so winemakers kind of have to come to terms with how 
Sangiovese or, or Nebbiolo um, or Nero Davila, how they work in the ground and also in the winery. So if that means using less oak or, you know, picking them a bit earlier or later, you know, that's what we've, that's, that's part of the learning process. But I think um, I judged at the Alternative Varieties Wine Show a couple of years ago um, and, you know, from what I saw there, the, the early signs are really promising. Um, you know, there's some fantastic producers here who are really going down the right road. Look, I think the rise in alternative varieties in Australia is a fantastic thing. It's come about for a number of reasons. A, our, our rising curiosity in, in all things wine um, and our changing tastes. And I think a lot of the alternative varieties that are finding their way into the ground in Australia at the moment are probably perhaps lend themselves, you know, a little bit more to the, the styles of food that we're eating. The other, the other reason I believe that, that we're starting to see more and more of them is that a lot of growers are starting to look at varieties that are going to survive in a, in a hotter, drier, you know, more water stressed environment going forward. Um, you know, and, and, and we are that, that country and a lot of them are looking towards sort of hotter, drier parts of the Mediterranean for these varieties. So we're seeing things like um, Primitivo, Negro Amaro, um, Nero Davila, um, Tariga Nacional, you know, those, those things that can survive in hot climates in Portugal, the same in the south of Italy and Spain. And I think that's a, that's a fantastic thing. Um, do they compete on style? They're different, you know. I mean, it, it would be wrong to, to compare them. You get to see, I guess, a snapshot of varietal character, which is great. I think the thing that we've got to get our heads around here is, you know, we've been making, we've been making Shiraz and Chardonnay and Cabernet a particular way, and those varieties, you know, really react differently to um, how they're treated in the winery and in the ground. And so winemakers kind of have to come to terms with how Sangiovese or, or Nebbiolo um, or Nero Davila, how they work in the ground and also in the winery. So if that means using less oak or, you know, picking them a bit earlier or later, you know, that's what we've, that's, that's part of the learning process. But I think um, I judged at the Alternative Varieties Wine Show a couple of years ago um, and, you know, from what I saw there, the, the early signs are really promising. Um, you know, there's some fantastic producers here who are really going down the right road.